Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the mean value theorem and how you can use it to solve problems that involve tables of values, which is a really common thing to do in AP calculus and calculus in general. Um, so there's a couple things you need to know, the first of which is the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem says if f of x is, so uh, two requirements, so it needs to be continuous on the closed interval from a to b, so that's what the brackets mean, closed interval, so you include a, you include b. Um, it also needs to be differentiable on the open interval from a to b, so in that case you do not include the endpoints. Um, if that's the case, then we know that um, f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a for some value of c, and then we also know that c has to be an element of the open interval from a to b. So that's what the mean value theorem says. Um, it kind of comes down to the slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the secant line through the endpoints. So that's the mean value theorem. You obviously need to know that if you're going to solve these problems. There's actually three other things that are really useful to know. Um, the first of which is that differentiability implies continuity because frequently you're just told that the function is differentiable, which means you automatically know it's continuous, but I like to state that to make sure that the person reading the solution I'm giving also knows it, or at least knows that I know it. Um, the second thing is that you'll often be told that a function is twice differentiable because that helps you solve more problems. Um, and twice differentiable just means uh, two things. It means that f of x itself is differentiable and therefore continuous, but also f prime is differentiable and therefore f prime is also continuous. And then uh, continuity is a big deal for these because continuity allows us to use the intermediate value theorem. So we're going to use that uh, a lot as we solve these problems. So now I'm going to do two different types of problems and let's see what they look like. So the first one is, um, we're told that f is twice differentiable, that's a common thing. We're given uh, these values, so we know that uh, f of x goes through the point 2, 8, the point 5, negative 4, and the point 9, 6. And our goal is to show that f prime of x equals 0 for some x, which um, seems like a weird thing to do. So this is a mean value theorem type of problem. I, tend, I call these table problems, and with table problems you're almost always going to use the mean value theorem at least once. So what I'm going to do is say that I'm allowed to use the mean value theorem. So f of x is differentiable, that's given, and I know that that means continuous. So I've established that um, it meets the requirements for the mean value theorem, so now I'm going to use it. So therefore, by the mean value theorem, so my goal here is to kind of show that um, the derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive, basically has a sign change. Um, so I'm going to look, uh, there's actually only two intervals I can use, right? 2 to 5 and then 5 to 9. I guess I could try to use 2 to 9, but that doesn't really help me. So first interval that I'm going to look at is right here from 2 to 5. So on the interval from 2 to 5, I know that f prime of c1, so I'm calling it c1 since I'm using the theorem twice, f prime of c1 is f of 5 minus f of 2, or 5 minus 2, which is negative uh, 12 over 3, which is negative 4, but it doesn't really matter. It's negative, that's the key thing. And then I'm going to say for some c1 element of 2 to 5. Now I'm going to do it again um, from 5 to 9. So on the interval from 5 to 9, I'm going to say f prime of c2 is equal to f of 9 minus f of 5 over 9 minus 5. Um, and that 6 minus negative 4 is 10 over 9 minus 5 is 4. So 10 over 4, which is 5 halves, chose to simplify that one. Um, and that's for c2 which is an element of 5 to 9. Okay, so now I've shown that f prime is definitely negative somewhere, definitely positive somewhere else. So now I'm going to use that information to show that f prime must have equaled 0. So to do that, I'm going to kind of invoke the, in, uh, the intermediate value theorem. So I know that f is twice differentiable. That's a big deal here because it means I can say that f prime is differentiable, which means f prime must be continuous. And as soon as I have continuity, I can then use the intermediate value theorem. So I know there's a sign chain, so f prime of c1 is less than 0, which is less than f prime of c2, so there's definitely 0. Um, therefore, by IVT, I can say that f prime of x equals 0 for some x. I mean, I happen to know that x is an element of c1, c2, which is definitely an element of 2 to 9, but that's where I'm going to end my uh, solution to this problem. So that proves it. Um, it uses mean value theorem twice, which is not an uncommon thing to do, and then intermediate value theorem once. I'm going to do one more type of problem just to show you kind of a different approach that can, uh, can be applied sometimes, not always. So here f of x is just differentiable, 
which is fine because it's continuous and we can use the mean value theorem, so that's good. Uh, we're given values, so we know it goes through f of x goes through negative 2, 7, 3, 18, and 6, 7. So this is actually set up, I could use the exact same approach, right? Because um, I know that f of x increases on negative 2 to 3, then it decreases on 3 to 6. But if you look at the table, you can actually solve this in a slightly easier way. So I'm going to say that I'm allowed to use the mean value theorem. So f of x is differentiable. This is how you start all of these. Uh, it's differentiable, therefore it's continuous, which means it satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem on this interval, on every interval, but it's especially this one. Um, therefore by mean value theorem. So in this case, instead of uh, diving in, I'm going to look at two things. So it goes through negative 2, 7 and through 6, 7, which means if I use the mean value theorem on that interval, I'm going to get 0 as the slope of the secant, and I'm kind of done. So I'm going to just jump in and use that. So f prime of c equals f of 6 minus f of negative 2 over 6 minus negative 2, which is definitely 0. And then I'm done. So I'm just going to say uh, for some c that's an element of negative 2, 6. And it actually just solved the problem. So um, when you're doing these sorts of problems, I do have this hint for you, or tip, or whatever you want to call it. Always look for the same y values first before you dive in and use the approach I used on the other problem. Um, because if there's the same y value, the, the solution is like one third as long. Um, okay, so that's the mean value theorem with tables. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.